Perfect. So welcome everyone to our On Things to Come uh, webinar, uh, online seminar organized by the International Space Science Institute Beijing, EC Beijing. Uh, I'm Laura, I'm the PR and editorial manager of EC Beijing. You can see in the webcam Professor Murakami Go, who is today's guest speaker and who's going to talk about the Baby Colombo mission of the European Space Agency and JAXA. And in the webcam, you can also see the executive director of EC Beijing, Professor uh, Wing Wen Ip. Uh, I would like to formally welcome Professor Murakami and thank him for uh, accepting our invitation to talk about Bepi Colombo uh, today. And specifically, he will talk about the Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter MIO. But uh, before I give the floor to Professor Ip to introduce uh, our, our guest speaker, Professor Murakami, I would like to say a couple of words about EC Beijing. Um, if it's not your first time here at our On Things to Come seminars, probably you've listened to uh, the introduction quite a few times, but I will be brief. EC Beijing was established in 2013. As I said, it's the International Space Science Institute, Beijing, and it was established established thanks to the agreement between the National Space Science Center of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the International Space Science Institute in Bern, Switzerland. Uh, since then, we have organized, uh, um, thanks to the support uh, of EC and of our partners and sponsors, we have organized plenty of uh, um, events and activities, um, most of them targeting the scientific community, and those include uh, workshops, forums, international teams, working groups, and so on. But we also have some, um, some activities that target the general public that in the past used to be offline, like, like our scientific activities. And in the past two years, given the, given the epidemic, Epidemic, unfortunately, we have uh, um, started to we have started organizing some online events, and we have two online series. Uh, one is this series, the On Things to Come webinar series, which uh, aims to address. Uh, um, ongoing and future space missions of different space age agencies, um, international ones, so um, NASA, uh, ESA, JAXA, and so on. And uh, the second series of webinars that we have is in Chinese, and it's called the 1001 Space Nights. And it aims to present, to introduce the, the achievements and the results of outstanding women scientists. Um, you can follow us on WeChat, we are on, on uh, several social media. And again, uh, um, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Professor Ip and thank you all for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Lola. Um, so today we have uh, Professor Go Murakami uh, to give the uh, number three talk in this uh, series uh, concerning BB Colombo mission to, to Mercury. And as we know, uh, the BB Colombo project is a very ambitious uh, mission uh, going to Mercury, and it is composed of two parts. Uh, one spacecraft uh, provided by ESA, um, a orbiter, and also another orbiter is from uh, JASA. Uh, Professor uh, Murakami is the project scientist of the Japanese uh, spacecraft, and uh, he as you can see, he's very young. He's a young scientist, um, just uh, graduated from, um, I mean, Barry uh, nine years ago from um, from Tokyo Tokyo University, and his uh, research uh, expertise interest is in in metallic physics and also uh, planetary atmosphere because he is he heavily involved in a very interesting another mission by by Jessa called Hisaki, and we hope that. In future, we will hear uh, from him, you know, on the on the scientific achievements of Hisaki. But today, he is going to talk tell us about what he's going to do with uh, with this uh, Japanese spacecraft uh, uh, PPM um, in um, at Mercury. Yes, Professor Murakami, please. Okay, thank you, Vixen. and thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, interesting uh, series. So now I start my screen sharing. It's uh, loading, so it should work. Yep. 
can you hear me? We can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So today I introduce uh, the, our uh, Japanese side uh, spacecraft, uh, Mercury Magnetic Orbiter. Uh, name is now Mio. And I'm Gomer Kami from JAXA, uh, working uh, as a project scientist of this um, spacecraft. Okay, so first of all, uh, let me remind them about Mercury. So, so Mercury has a its uh, own planetary magnetic field, and uh, the strength intensity is about 1% uh, of the Earth at surface. And it has a very slow rotation, and of course, it's exposed to a very strong solar wind. So it means that uh, the Mercury has a very dynamic magnet sphere. And also, oh, Mercury does have a thick atmosphere, uh, just uh, only has a tenuous exosphere. And it means that uh, so interactions between surface and space environment are very important uh, at Mercury. And due to the uh, weak uh, magnetic field, so uh, the uh, large, uh, large lama radius of ion there and uh, about several hundred kilometers for one key keb at magnet poles so it means a uh, important role uh, the heavy ions uh, plays very important role in uh, micro's magnet sphere especially the kinetic process point of view and of course the micro is the uh, innermost solar planet so and uh, it can be uh, an analog uh, for the uh, uh, exoplanetary environments, uh, especially the uh, uh, habitable exoplanets around very cool stars, uh, which is uh, exposed to very extreme environment and the solar, wind, uh, solar winds. So this is the Mercury's uh, topics today. And so the Mercury has a very unique and complicated system, uh, I mean the environment. So Mercury is uh, exposed to the solar wind and uh, the surface uh, has an interaction between, uh, the, uh, with the solar wind. And uh, also Mercury has the exosphere and magnetospheres. And the exospheres are the source for the magnetospheric ions. So oh, it has very complicated uh, system between them. And also the, so in Mercury, there are no oh, ionospheres and direct interactions between solar wind and surface. So oh, it's a very e e key topic uh, for physical interactions uh, between solar wind and the planetary uh, environment. So oh, why uh, the investigating mercury is important. So oh, let me give you uh, some science topics and science issues after Messenger. So Messenger spacecraft was launched in 2004 and uh, ended at the Mercury orbit in 2011. And it had a four years mission. Uh, and uh, yeah, it got, it got a lot of uh, new information and uh, the science uh, findings. So the orbit is like that. So it's polar, uh, like polar orbit, but uh, it's uh, a, <coughs> uh, Upper apices is in the southern, southern hemisphere. So it has uh, uh, most of the high uh, resolution measurements were done at the northern hemisphere. And here's the instrument list. So my uh, messenger had uh, a lot of instruments and uh, full coverage of uh, the, uh, each scientific field. And here I showed some uh, plasma measurements uh, by messenger. So the sensors are almost like that. So uh, EPS, XRS, uh, neutron spectrometer, and GRS. And for electrons uh, from about uh, several kilo EB to one mega EB. And for ions, uh, so EPS and the FIPS uh, has a sensitivity uh, for ions. But uh, so there are no uh, sensors for the low energy electrons. And also no plasma wave measurements. And of course, uh, the, uh, for southern hemisphere observations are, are limited due to the, uh, its orbit. And of course, the magnetic field measurements were done by uh, the magnetometer. 
So oh, first, uh, I will quickly review of the uh, science topics at the Marquis Magnet View. Okay, so Marquis Magnet Sphere is uh, the scale is uh, like that. So the structure is very similar uh, to the Earth's Magnet Sphere, uh, but the scale is small. So it's a uh, Marquis planet body and the magnet poles is uh, around 1.3 to 1.5 uh, Mercury's Rally, and Baoshock is uh, like that. So, and the strength uh, of the magnetic field is about 200 nanotesla at surface. And one uh, big point uh, at Mercury's magnetic field is the offset. Uh, so the dipole is uh, has the offset uh, shifted toward the, the northward uh, about by uh, 0 0.2 RM. Yeah, like that. So it's a, a unique uh, point uh, at Mercury. Okay, and so Messenger found uh, that uh, how magnetic uh, Mercury's uh, magnetosphere is dynamic. So the uh, about the they decide uh, magnetic pole's location is in average about uh, one point four RM, one point four five RM, and of course if uh, it is exposed to the stronger uh, solar wind, uh, it goes to uh, closer to the planet. Yeah, here is uh, uh, some statistics uh, of the uh, magnetic pole's location. Uh, with uh, the solar wind lamp pressure. So the pressure is higher, then uh, the magnetic pole's location is closer. And in some cases, uh, the magnetic pole's location is uh, more or less uh, on the planetary surface. So I, I will show later more, but uh, yes, it can happen uh, at Mercury's magnetic sphere and magnetic poles. So on the, and there is there are some discussions uh, about the uh, magnetic poles, uh, this and magnetic poles, about the compression uh, by solar wind or the erosion uh, by the connections. So uh, in our uh, current understandings, uh, so only compression cannot explain uh, such a magnetic poles uh, locations uh, reaching attaching uh, to surface. So. Uh, it may be due to the strong magnetic reconnection plays a key role uh, to uh, move the data magnet pose location onto the surface and closer. Yes, and there are some uh, extreme cases uh, with very strong uh, solar wind, I mean the CME uh, events. So in some uh, messenger uh, observations, uh, uh, the day side magnet poles uh, are disappeared, uh, so on. Uh, especially the no PZ was uh, uh, measured by messenger. So here's the same uh, similar uh, uh, plot. Uh, so the day side uh, magnet pose location uh, with uh, the solar wind uh, pressure. So in some extreme cases, uh, the day side magnet pole location is goes uh, less than one RM. So the day side magnet poles are disappeared. So, but there are some uh, still uh, uh, some issues are uh, remaining. So for example, the how much contribution by e induction currents uh, played and uh, why uh, such a high reconnection rates uh, achieved uh, at Mercury and how much contribution of solar wind, uh, solar wind driven sputtering uh, to Mercury's exosphere because uh, in this, in such cases, uh, the solar wind can uh, precipitate uh, to surface directly. Okay, and another topic about the substone uh, at Mercury. So uh, we, uh, Messenger measured uh, many times uh, the su uh, substone like events. And uh, uh, the sequence itself uh, seems very earth like uh, substone events, but the time scale is quite different. So it takes just uh, two to four minutes uh, time scale 
uh, from growth to expansion phase. So very rapid uh, cycle of, of uh, Mercury's substorm. And also uh, some uh, messenger had a statistic uh, studies <coughs> of the, these substorm events. And uh, so the duration is much shorter than the Earth, uh, as I already said, uh, 50 to 100 times shorter. And also the amplitude is higher uh, than the Earth, uh, about two and three times. So it implies uh, the reconnection driven uh, dynamic magnetic sphere is uh, uh, the extreme reconnection rates uh, occur in uh, Mercury's environment. So we are still we still have uh, some uh, remaining questions. Uh, any dependence on solar wind conditions and what controls uh, such a reconnections? There are also the science issues to be addressed by the Okay, and so message found a very interesting uh, events and phenomena. Uh, so I call uh, uh, I personally call it uh, the X-ray aurora uh, by the electron precipitations. So of course uh, it's not uh, from the atmosphere of Mercury, but uh, it's from surface illumination uh, by electron precipitations. So Messenger's X-ray instrument uh, found uh, the in night side uh, at the surface uh, fluxes uh, due to the induced. Uh, electrons, uh, more than four kilo EV. And uh, it clearly shows uh, the dawn dusk asymmetry. It uh, only shows uh, the dawn side. And also, uh, not only the X ray sensor, but the uh, GRS gamma ray spectrometer also detected uh, the similar uh, distribution. Uh, so, uh, it, they showed uh, the clear uh, uh, electron uh, precipitations. So, but uh, there still remain some issues of so, uh, the solar wind effect on the precipitations and geometrical. Uh, so, uh, and so Messenger has a ge uh, orbital uh, limitation, limitations. So for especially the Southern hemisphere uh, measurements. So are there any effect of these uh, limitations? And also uh, such uh, electron precipitations can uh, affect on the exosphere, it's still remaining. And ion composition. So as I said, uh, so ions are very key e e component in the Mercury's magnetosphere uh, because of such, uh, their uh, large gamma radius and also the dynamic magnetosphere. So in this uh, environment, uh, some kind of non-adiabatic energization of ions, uh, especially during the compression of magnetosphere, uh, can happen. So uh, the ions uh, distributions and uh, <coughs> are very important in Mercury's magnetosphere. And so uh, Messenger Phillips uh, detected some uh, ion components, uh, especially the sodium ions and uh, oxygen ions around the cusp, uh, about cusp region, they said cusp region and the night side uh, equatorial region. So uh, we will uh, address uh, such an uh, effect of ions to the magnetospheric dynamics uh, more precise, uh, more in detail by the Picolombo. And magnetic field measurement uh, found uh, Mercury's field aligned current, uh, the evidence of the field aligned current. So uh, the uh, current intensity is about uh, 20 to 40 kilo uh, ampere. And uh, it seems just only the region one like uh, field aligned current uh, occurs. So it's because uh, some of the convection flow uh, may impact uh, to surface at the night side uh, before the producing the region to like current. But the big uh, open question is the closure of this kind of uh, field aligned current. So uh, the messenger team uh, proposed uh, the closure should be the surface of the, inner, uh, the core, uh, the conductive material, 
but uh, uh, we need to know more detail uh, about the conductivity and so on. And also, the uh, we still don't know, or not yet, uh, we don't know all the correlation uh, with the solar wind and uh, the field currents. Yeah, and uh, the upward current carrier is still unknown. So I uh, picked up some big issues uh, about the magnetosphere. Uh, so these issues should be addressed by the Colombo and especially the Mercury's magnetospheric orbit on you. And of course, uh, the Mercury's environment is uh, the important and key analog uh, to exploratory environments. Uh, because uh, it's exposed to very strong stellar wind and uh, it has a weak magnetic field. So we want to investigate uh, uh, the relation between the stellar wind and the planetary uh, magnetosphere and its environment uh, to know, to understand uh, not only the solar system, but the for, uh, for more uh, planetary system, uh, including uh, the uh, planetary system, exoplanetary systems around the cool stars. And I move to the exospheric topics. So Mercury has an exosphere, uh, and one of the main components is sodium. And uh, it's a uh, source process uh, is uh, still uh, open uh, questions. So there are some uh, several uh, processes, uh, so photon stimulated desorption, ion sputtering, uh, meteoroid impact, and thermal desorption uh, can be the uh, can effect on the uh, exosphere uh, generations. But uh, the uh, the major uh, uh, processes uh, are still uh, not well known. And the messenger observations uh, was done by a mask's instrument. Uh, it's a spectrometer uh, from UV to visible. And uh, so sodium measurement uh, was done at the visible 589 nanometer, but the spectral resolution is not so high. So they can, uh, masks cannot detect, uh, uh, observe uh, the exosphere uh, at the day, on, on the day side disks. So uh, masks need to have the rim scan uh, like that. And uh, they had the uh, altitude scan for this and uh, local time scan for, for this. This is the observation uh, by masks. And so I quickly show the result of the masks uh, for sodium and calcium and magnesium. So for calcium and magnesium, uh, you can see is there a clear uh, dawn dusk asymmetry. So dawn side is much is stronger, in, uh, higher intensity like that. So it means uh, the meteoroid impact can uh, play a key role uh, for generating uh, this exosphere. But for sodium, uh, it's much more complicated. So I see, uh, I quickly review. So here is the uh, uh, results by uh, messenger masks. So for uh, the altitude uh, distribution, it seems uh, there are two temperature components. Uh, one is about uh, 1,200 Kelvin. And the higher temperature components is about from uh, 5,000 to 10,000 Kelvin minor components. And also uh, the observation showed uh, the very uh, constant, uh, highly constant uh, results of the temperature uh, for, for season. So it shows uh, the true annual angle of mercury. So it means uh, one mercury year uh, from here to here. And you see it's very constant temperature uh, measured by messenger. And year to year, uh, it's very also constant. On the other hand, so sodium exosphere has a very a much seasonal variation of its distribution, uh, like that, uh, mainly due to the Doppler shift uh, between Sun and Mercury. So the solar radiation pressure uh, changes uh, at the uh, Mercury. 
but uh, actually it, it was very surprising. Uh, so messenger didn't detect uh, the year to year uh, uh, drastic uh, episodic variations. So it, it was very constant. Uh, so every year uh, the result was very same, similar. And also uh, at this moment, we don't see any surface dependence on uh, the measurements. Analysis is still uh, going, but uh, up to now, uh, we don't see the clear uh, evidence uh, relation relating to surface dependence. So uh, there are some uh, still uh, uh, remaining issues. And uh, the biggest one is uh, we call the code pole issue. So uh, the sodium column density is deduced by the uh, messenger. Uh, uh, this is a maximum around a certain uh, longitude around uh, here, uh, showed by the yellow arrows. And uh, due, because uh, the Mercury's rotation uh, uh, period is uh, locked uh, to this uh, uh, orbital period around Sun, uh, two by three. So due to this, uh, so these uh, longitude are uh, always uh, a bit colder uh, than uh, the other longitude. So due to this, uh, uh, the sodium uh, exosphere seems uh, uh, denser and uh, stronger emissions uh, in this uh, longitude. But uh, the, some modeling and simulation approaches uh, cannot uh, make uh, the same uh, distributions and the temporal variations. So it's still an uh, open question uh, found by Messenger. And Messenger masks has some limitation of observation, uh, as I said. So it has performed mainly the dim scan. So they cannot uh, measure uh, the high latitude components uh, many times. Uh, in some cases it can, but uh, and generally, the low latitude observations were performed. So the high latitude components uh, observed by the ground-based telescopes uh, are, cannot be cannot uh, observed by uh, messenger. So uh, here is a list of the open issues uh, around uh, about the exospheres. So we will uh, address uh, these questions by the so, uh, as you you may know already, but uh, I remind uh, briefly. So, BepiCombo has uh, two spacecraft. Uh, one is Mercury's planetary orbiter, uh, much closer uh, to the Mercury's surface, uh, and our spacecraft is uh, Mercury's magnetospheric orbiter, uh, Mio, about uh, six hundred kilometer to eleven thousand six hundred kilometer uh, elliptic uh, orbit. And it's uh, the orbital period is about 9.3 hours. And our spacecraft is control, uh, spin control uh, stabilized uh, to measure the magnetosphere, exosphere, and dust environments around Mercury. Of course, uh, two spacecraft uh, mission has a, a big advantage to the messenger observations. So we can perform the coordinated observation uh, by with the two spacecraft, uh, especially for the magnetic field uh, measurement, uh, can uh, divide uh, the effects of solar wind uh, fluctuations and uh, Mercury's its own uh, magnetic field, and we can see the response uh, of the Mercury's environment to solar wind uh, changes. And also, we have the north-south symmetric orbit, so we can measure. Uh, almost the same uh, resolution at the north and south, southern hemispheres. So uh, it is our spacecraft MIO, uh, mass is about 250 kilogram, uh, and it's spin stabilized uh, uh, with a four second uh, spin period. And uh, we have uh, two uh, uh, extension boom uh, mast. Uh, it has a magne magnetic field uh, sensor, uh, magnetometer, uh, and such coil uh, on both uh, top of the both uh, booms. 
And we also have uh, uh, four or two pairs of uh, wire antennas to measure the electrical field uh, around Mercury. Okay, and here is a list of our instrument and the sensors. So actually Mio has a comprehensive instrument suite uh, for investigating Mercury's environment, uh, I mean the plasma uh, particles and the fields, uh, exosphere and dust. So for plasma measurements, uh, we have three instruments. Uh, so uh, MPPE for plasma particles, MGF uh, magnetic field and plasma wave investigation, uh, PWI. And MPP has uh, a lot of sensors uh, from low energy to high energy for ions and electrons. Uh, especially the low energy electrons uh, measurement is the first time uh, because the message didn't have uh, such sensor. And so I compare the, uh, the performance uh, or specification of both uh, instrument on BP Colombo and Messenger. And so for ions, uh, we have uh, a mass spectroscopy e sensor uh, with uh, high resolution, mass resolution, and also high energy e sensors uh, for ions and electrons. And also we have new sensor of uh, energetic neutron, uh, neutral atoms, uh, which can uh, make the plasma imaging like that. And also the plasma wave investigation is uh, very new at Mercury. Uh, we can measure both electric field and uh, magnetic field uh, waves uh, from DC to 10 megahertz for electric field and few hertz to uh, 640 kilohertz for magnetic field. We also have the uh, exospheric imager, uh, name is Musafi, uh, which can uh, measure the sodium uh, exospheres uh, with very high uh, spectral resolution. So we can see also the dayside uh, disk uh, a disk uh, of mercury uh, because we can separate uh, the solar deflection light and uh, the sodium exospheric uh, emission. We also have the new, new measurement around mercury is a dust monitor uh, MDM. So we can uh, measure the dust environment and distribution uh, at the inner heliosphere uh, around 0.3 AU to 0.5 AU uh, first time. So here's the orbit uh, of uh, uh, Mio uh, spacecraft, and also MPO orbit is uh, shown here. So uh, for the uh, true anomaly zero season uh, at the perihelion, uh, our uh, space spacecraft is uh, ah, sorry here this one uh, mainly in the uh, uh, solar wind. They said the solar wind. And on the night side, uh, we enter uh, in the magnet sphere like that. And for twin anomaly in 90 degree is uh, like that. Uh, so we are uh, mainly at the uh, dawn sector. And only in the aphelion season, uh, our orbit is mainly almost inside the magnet sphere like that. So yeah, and here I show uh, the uh, duration ratio or uh, inside the magnetosphere. So in almost uh, cases uh, in the one Mercury year, uh, the Mio is mainly inside uh, inside the solar wind. Uh, about uh, eighty five percent of one orbit uh, is inside uh, the solar wind, like that. But only around the uh, aphelion, uh, we go inside the, the magnet, magnet sphere a long time, uh, like that. So this is the orbit of our spacecraft. And we have uh, some uh, operational uh, constraints. So one is uh, the summer point of view. So around the perihelion season, uh, there are strong uh, summer constraints, so we cannot turn on our science instruments always, but uh, about uh, one third of operation time uh, can be dedicated, uh, can be devoted to the science of observations. And in, uh, from 60 to 90 degree is 66% uh, of operation time can be 
useful for the science observations. In the other uh, season, uh, there are uh, less uh, thermal constraints. But at the uphelian season, uh, we also have the electrical power constraints. So due to the eclipse, so in in this period, uh, we can not perform the full uh, science uh, observations. So it's a strong uh, limitation for us. And for sodium imager, uh, the geometry is shown here. So it's a nominal. Uh, Observation position is like that. So in uh, the Massachusetts field of view, uh, Mercury disk is uh, inside of the field of view like that. So we can take the global image uh, of the Mercury's exosphere uh, and the main uh, from uh, the northern hemisphere uh, like that. And uh, in this uh, nominal observation position, uh, the spatial resolution about, is about uh, 30 kilometers. And here I show the uh, sim uh, simulated uh, like sodium exosphere uh, taken by Musashi for all the true anomaly and so one mercury year uh, from true anomaly zero or perihelion season to aphelion season. So we can see the drastic uh, seasonal variation of uh, sodium exosphere uh, with the tail, uh, long tail season and uh, without tail uh, like that. And also we see that some dawn dusk asymmetry here and tail observation uh, here like that. Okay, so now I uh, quickly introduce the uh, status of our spacecraft after launch. So after launch in 2018, uh, we had a, a commissioning phase uh, for a bit long time. Uh, and uh, we completed all the commissionings uh, of the instruments, including the high voltage operations. And then uh, we had a first uh, Earth flyby in April 2020, last year. And then uh, we performed some cruise observation campaigns uh, at, uh, for example, from end of June to mid July and also the August. And then uh, in October, we had a Venus flyby. Uh, First Venus flyby uh, last year. So during uh, the cruise, uh, we have some uh, additional constraints uh, because all the spacecraft are attached, uh, stacked, and uh, our spacecraft meal is surrounded by the big sun shield. So due to this, uh, the some field of view of instruments are limited. So op op open field of view is only the above the spacecraft. The D axis. So, and during the uh, throwing cruise, uh, interplanetary cruise, uh, always uh, sun direction is uh, here uh, due to the thermal and the electrical point, uh, uh, electrical power point of view. And uh, for ions, solar wind ions, uh, it can move uh, the beam like uh, motion, so it cannot enter uh, our sensors ion sensors. For electrons, uh, thanks to the uh, thermal uh, motions, uh, it can come, uh, some components uh, enter to our electron sensor. So it means that in solar wind, we can measure uh, the electrons, uh, especially measure the temperatures and uh, densities, but we cannot uh, measure the ions. Uh, it's not the case uh, during the flybys. So during flybys, uh, the planetary ions can come uh, from this direction also. So the planetary flybys are very important occasion, uh, chance uh, for ion sensors to see some signals uh, during the cruise phase. And I quickly show, I quickly show the initial results from uh, Earth flyby. So in Earth flyby, the spacecraft comes from day side and crossing the bow shock magnet poles and uh, the closest approach around the uh, dawn to night sector and go outside at the dusk sector like that. And here I show the electron sensor uh, results. So we clearly see the boundary crossings. So here uh, it's a solar wind. And then uh, bow shock crossing is here and magnet C is. And then magnet pose crossing. So we 
can see it clearly it's uh, uh, the boundaries and also one of the uh, plasma sheet uh, we measured the plasma sheet electrons and also outbound uh, measurements like that for ions uh, we also detected uh, the uh, magnetospheric ions by a low energy ion sensor mia here uh, it's a uh, uh, at the uh, magnetic magnetosphere spheric uh, ions and uh, we also have the uh, ion mass spectroscopy uh, data uh, like that so yes as uh, swing wave was the uh, first time to see such uh, scientific uh, data and uh, it was succeeded and cruise observations was were performed and uh, especially the electron sensor MEA uh, detected the solar wind success series. So here see the time series of uh, the energy energy of uh, the solar wind electrons and density is shown here uh, from end of June to mid July and end of August uh, campaigns. Especially here uh, we see some interplanetary shock uh, uh, detected successfully. So now we have started to uh, analyze this data uh, in more detail, uh, especially comparing with some uh, uh, the solar wind simulation uh, like uh, Susano or supported by our Japanese colleagues. So our science scientific study has already started even during the cruise. And for Venus flyby, uh, he also shows some quick results. So first Venus flyby. Uh, Spacecraft comes from day side and uh, the cross approach here and go on night side like that. And for electron sensor, uh, MEA is on the top panel, uh, also shows the clear boundary, uh, boundary crossings, the shock here and uh, the ion pose or induced magnet tail uh, region uh, crossing here. And some plasma sheets like uh, distributions are detected here. And for ion sensor, I uh, also detected some uh, clear signals, uh, interesting data. Uh, just after partial crossing here, uh, there uh, seems two energy distributions. And also at the night side, uh, there are plasma sheet ions, uh, maybe originally came from the Venus atmosphere. Also, the PWI, a wave investigation, uh, detected some signals uh, just before crossing. Uh, the bow, uh, bow shock. So we are also analyzing more detail in these data. So oh, finally, I should introduce some upcoming observations. So we still uh, continue our uh, uh, cruise, uh, interplanetary cruise in the inner heliosphere. And uh, now we have uh, several spacecraft in this uh, region. Uh, I mean, the solar orbiter and Parker solar probe. So now uh, our teams, uh, some special team, uh, studying the interesting geometries uh, with such a spacecraft, other spacecraft, uh, in some cases like uh, radial alignment or uh, park on the same Parker spiral cases. So and uh, we are selected down selection. We perform down selection of the campaigns uh, because we have some limitations of operations, uh, mainly come from the downlink data rate. <laughs> And so uh, we already have uh, selected some uh, campaigns uh, in, uh, this year, uh, 2021. And then now we are uh, studying uh, the first half of 22 operations plan. And also uh, now uh, in March 21, uh, we have some joint observations uh, with uh, Akatsuki Venus Orbiter, Japanese Venus Orbiter, and the Hinode uh, Japanese Solar Telescope. Uh, so I, uh, uh, I show uh, more detail in the next slide. And next Venus flyby will happen in 10th of August uh, this year. And uh, in this time, uh, the closest approach is much closer to Venus. It's about 550 kilometers. And uh, also it's very in, uh, interesting because uh, just one day after uh, solar orbiter's Venus flyby, so both spacecraft are very close, so we can perform uh, many uh, coordinated observation and uh, joint studies. And then soon we will have the first micro flyby in uh, October this year. So uh, this year we will finally get the uh, first uh, Mercury science data. Uh, so 
uh, it's still a very interesting phase now. Yeah, this is uh, almost the last slide. So we are now performing the coordinate observations uh, during the Bitcombo solar conjunction. So now Bitcombo is the solar conjunction period. And uh, uh, fortunately, is, uh, Venus is also the similar uh, position seen from the Earth. So here uh, is the uh, observation result of Soho, uh, seen from uh, uh, the Earth direction. And Venus is here, so I mean it means uh, Akatsuki is also here, and uh, Bitcombo's trajectory is like that uh, on the 13th and 14th March. And uh, in this uh, occasion, uh, we can perform the radio measurements uh, of solar corona and solar wind, uh, occultation uh, observation. So uh, now we are performing this uh, coordinated observation by uh, using the radio science instrument. Uh, on the Bepi Colombo and Akatsuki. And also, uh, our uh, many solar telescopes uh, can see the surface uh, and uh, the corona uh, measurement. And you know, the, uh, the quick look result is uh, overposed here, like that. And uh, also, the solar wind uh, simulations can be uh, contributed to this study. So now we are performing this. And uh, at least the operations point, operational point of view, it goes well now. So oh, here's the summary. So Bitcoin Mio is dedicated to the micro environment investigation, uh, especially the magnetic, solar wind, magnetosphere, uh, exosphere, and dust. And so status is uh, very well. Uh, so we performed uh, many e science uh, measurement at the uh, planetary flyby and also the planetary cruise. And uh, so, uh, now uh, we are performing this several coordinated observations with other spacecraft. And so uh, we will have the second Venus flyby this year and first micro flyby. So uh, we will get uh, uh, more and more uh, interest, interesting science data. And so please stay tuned uh, on the Picombo project. That's all. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Professor, for coming. This is a very interesting talk on the Bibi Colombo uh, mission. And you. Um, we can see there are some questions uh, to you. Uh, can you see mm -hmm. the Can you see the questions? Um, uh, I don't think so. On the chat box, I think. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry, my connection went down. We have uh, several questions. The first one, mm -hmm. I can read it aloud for you. Would the yes. surface of Mercury be charged to high electrostatic, electrostatic potential? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the surface of Mercury? Sorry? The surface of Mercury, yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. And so it's very interesting topic. Uh, so, we'll, we can compare with uh, uh, the case of on the moon, and but uh, it's very different. Uh, of course, the moon has, doesn't have its own uh, magnetic field, so oh, we, we, we need to uh, think, uh, study about the uh, photoelectron uh, effect and uh, uh, of the magnetic. Uh, contributions uh, and the electron precipitation and so on. So it's very uh, complicated complicated uh, than uh, the lunar case. And uh, it's also the uh, topic, science topic uh, of the MIO spacecraft. OK, thank you very much. Second question is, what is the cause of the very hot calcium atoms? Hot what? Calcium. calcium? Yeah, calcium, calcium, okay. calcium atoms. Yeah, so uh, currently, uh, the main uh, process uh, for generating the calcium exosphere is uh, uh, thought about uh, thought that uh, the meteoroid meteoroid impact. Uh, so uh, it can. Uh, uh, explain the high energy, high temperature of the calcium, but not uh, completely explained. So uh, not only the sodium, but also the calcium and magnesium. 
and potassium uh, exospheres are still uh, interesting issue, the science issue around Mercury's uh, exosphere, and still uh, some uh, scientists are studying uh, by, using, by using messenger result and also the ground based observation and modeling uh, simulations uh, to uh, explain uh, the dissipations. Okay. Uh, next question is actually a long one. So if you want to try to take a look at the chat box, maybe that, that's useful. Mm -hmm. The question is, would the MPPE instrument detect the full ion distribution function? Mm -hmm. And what is the temporal resolution? Oh, okay. Mercury magnetospheric activities can vary from seconds to minutes, making high mm -hmm. resolution data especially important. Yeah, thanks. Uh, very good question. So. Yes, uh, so potentially we can detect the full uh, distribution. Uh, but uh, so we have several resolution data modes, uh, and we have uh, also the strong constraints on the telemetry, downlink telemetry rate. So, uh, first, uh, we have a very low resolution uh, mode, and uh, we will uh, take, uh, all, uh, take the, get the, all the data with uh, low resolution mode. Uh, and it, uh, uh, its temporal resolution is, uh, it, depend, it depends on the sensor of MPP, but uh, uh, about uh, uh, four seconds to the 30 seconds. And highest uh, temporal resolution uh, mode uh, is uh, uh, not uh, completely downlinked. So we need to select a, a several part of uh, this such kind of data. So for example, the inter interesting part uh, of the events and and so on and geometries and in this case yes a uh, much higher uh, uh, temporal resolution can be achieved but uh, uh, the volume of uh, uh, the duration of the data is not so uh, long about uh, 20 percent of something of the observation time can be done with uh, higher resolution data all right thank you very much Next question is, how important are the sodium ions in the magnetospheric dynamics of mercury? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, actually it's uh, still uh, under study using the messenger data and also the simulations. Uh, for example, oh, uh, some uh, studies uh, reported uh, some distrib uh, 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 distribution uh, of asymmetries, uh, ion distribution asymmetry at dawn and dusk side, and uh, it can affect on the uh, magnet poles uh, some uh, phenomena, uh, and also it can uh, contribute to some uh, the instabilities uh, at the magnet poles uh, at the downside and dusk side. So uh, this kind of uh, the dynamics uh, can be affected by the ion distributions and also the uh, how they can uh, accelerate they can be accelerated uh, and uh, like uh, non-adiabatic energy energizations uh, are not well understood uh, around mercury so they can be the uh, uh, the science topic uh, addressed by Bitcoin for ions, especially high, heavy ions. Thank you. Next uh, question is, what is the time accuracy of electric field measurement? Mm. And what is the, uh, also what is the time resolution of the electric field measurement? Okay, I forgot the uh, correct value, but uh, the uh, scheme itself is the same. So we have several uh, resolutions and uh, we will get uh, all, all the data with uh, low resolution data. Uh, and then uh, we, we get the, uh, the part of uh, the higher resolution data. Uh, actually, I forgot uh, the uh, time accuracy, I mean. But it's, uh, the accuracy itself is uh, very high and resolution, uh, I forgot the value. Okay. 
Um, next and maybe last question. Are the substorms at Mercury and the Earth different? Hmm. Question. So actually, uh, the cycle itself is similar. Uh, so it, it has a growth phase and then uh, the expansion phase and uh, recovery phase. Uh, but I think the driver is uh, different. Uh, so for Mercury, uh, the, these kind of substorms uh, should be derived uh, the, uh, mainly the uh, data set reconnections uh and with very high recognition rates so this magnetic field transfer uh, uh events uh, happen very quickly and uh, frequently so it can uh, drive uh, the substance with this kind of uh very uh, high uh, times uh, short time scale so i think it's uh, different from the us Thank you very much. Um, I see no further questions. I see uh, some of the participants have written. Thank you very much. Uh, a very nice yep. talk, Jun Hong, Li Jia Yang. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating. And thank you, of course, for the talk. Um, if we have no further questions, then maybe we can wrap up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Murakami, for the excellent presentation and for accepting our invitation, uh, Professor E. Pitbeck. And I would like to remind everyone that this was the third uh, seminar on the Bepi Colombo mission, but uh, the series has four talks. The, the fourth one will be on the 7th of April with Yoshifumi Saito. Um, and it will be about the mercury plasma particle experiment. So 7th of April, 4 p.m. Uh, Beijing time. And uh, thank you very much once again, and have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.